Hello everybody, welcome to my Computercraft Lua tutorial. In this chapter I'll show and talk about what Computercraft and Lua are, as well as everything you need to know to run and start learning it. This lesson will present all of the prerequisites you need to get started. First thing you need to know is that Lua is a procedural scripting language. Whereas an object-oriented language is written with the mindset of manipulating data within objects, Lua is written with more of a step-by-step -step mindset. Lua is also an interpreted programming language, which means that it is written within the environment of a software-based program, and the code written is interpreted by said software. The second thing you need to start this tutorial is a basic understanding of algebra. You need to know some math to understand programming. As long as you know at least what PEMDAS is, you're ready to get started with this tutorial. You also need a PC. That means you need a computer that's running Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. In order, to, in order to follow this tutorial. The next thing you need is the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE for short. I know you didn't come here to learn Java, but I'll explain why you need this in a few moments. You can download the JRE at this link, which will be in the video description below, and the web page should automatically detect which version of Java you need for your system. Just click Agree and Start Free Download, and follow the steps in the installer. I will be teaching you how to write Lua in Computercraft. Computercraft is a modification, or a mod, for Minecraft Java Edition. As such, you will need to own a copy of Minecraft Java Edition. If you already have Minecraft, you can skip this whole section, but if you don't, go to Minecraft.net. Once there, click on Get Minecraft, then click on Computer, then click the platform you use. Now, depending on what internet browser you use, it will automatically detect what platform you're on, but if not, you'll want to select Linux, Mac, or PC. Since I'm on Windows 10, I will pick PC. And then if you're using Windows as well, you must choose the Java edition. Do not choose the Windows 10 edition because Computercraft will not work on that version. This is why we needed to install Java a few moments ago, because it is needed to run Minecraft. Click on Java edition and go ahead and buy the game. I'm not going to click on the buy button now because I already have the game, but you can click on buy Minecraft and follow the process. It's only a one-time payment, so once you have it, you have it forever, including all newer and older versions of the game. Once you've bought the game, you'll be brought to the download page for the Minecraft launcher. I'm going to go ahead and say do not download the Minecraft launcher. There are multiple ways to install mods to Minecraft, and while it is doable with the vanilla launcher, we are going to use a third-party launcher instead called MultiMC because it makes it way easier to install mods like Computercraft. You can also get a mod pack launcher such as Feed the Beast, which will let you play the game with multiple mods pre-installed, but since all we want is Computercraft, we'll use MultiMC instead. To get MultiMC, go to multimc.org and scroll down to Downloads and download the version for your operating system. When downloading, I recommend saving it to its own folder on your computer. The downloaded file will be a zip file. If you don't have a program that can open zip files, go to the video description and click the link to download WinRAR and get the latest free or trial version for your platform. When you open the file in WinRAR, you'll get this dialog box that says after a 40-day trial, you must buy a license. This 40-day trial will never actually expire, so you can just click close and you can use this program forever without having to worry about it. Alternatively, you can download WinZip, which serves the same exact purpose. Once you have what you need, open up the zip file, click and drag this MultiMC folder into the folder you created for your download, and now you can delete the zip file and close WinRAR or WinZip, whichever one you're using. Go into the MultiMC folder and double click the MultiMC application. It'll look like this. Select the the language that you want to use and click Next. Now, if you have multiple versions of Java installed, select the one that you want to use. If you only have one version installed, select the one that just says Java W under the Path column. This should ensure that you're using the latest version, which I recommend using anyway. Next, you need to set how much memory to allocate. In this case, memory is referring to your RAM, or random access memory. This is a physical component inside your computer that your computer uses to store temporary information. You can leave the minimum allocation alone, because that doesn't need to be changed, and if your system can handle it, you should raise the maximum allocation. I recommend raising it to 4096 megabytes, which is 4 gigabytes, but just to be safe, I find it very unwise to use more than half of what memory you have because your computer still needs some of it to function while you play the game. If you don't know how much RAM you have, you will need to look up how to find it. If you're looking at your RAM in gigabytes, you can convert it to megabytes by opening up a calculator and multiplying that number by 1024. Multiplying that number by 1024. And then you can divide that number by 2 
to get how much your maximum allocation should be. In my case, I have 16 gigabyte, gigabytes of RAM, so I will want to set my maximum to 8192. Now, I know most of the internet should know by now not to do this, but since I'm expecting children and computer illiterate people to watch these tutorials, I want to make a quick PSA. Do not, and I repeat, do not try to download more RAM if you feel you don't have enough. RAM is a physical part of your computer. It is not a file or software that you can just download and install. If you need more RAM, you will need to buy the new physical part to replace or add on to what you already have. Anywhere that says you can download more RAM has no other intention than to install a virus on your computer and destroy it or steal your personal information or files. Now that that's out of the way, once you've figured out how much RAM you need to allocate, click Next and then click Finish and you'll be presented with an empty window. Now let's set up your Minecraft account. Click on the Profiles button in the top right win of the window, then click Manage Accounts. On the right sidebar, click Add, then enter your email and password you set when you bought the game. Another public service announcement. You should never give your passwords away to anyone for any reason. This is primarily for playing on multiplayer servers, and you do not need to log in if you are playing offline or in single player. MultiMC does not store your information anywhere except for your own system so that you don't have to sign in every single time you start the game. Once you're signed in, you can click close at the bottom of the window. Now we need to install the actual game. At the top left of the window, click the Add Instance button. You need to pick the version of Minecraft you want to play, the latest of which is 1.16.4 at the time of recording. We don't want that version though, we want the latest version that Computercraft has been developed for. So we'll need to go to the website to download Computercraft. This here is the link and it will be in the description below as always. The original developer for Computercraft stopped developing the mod a long time ago, but someone else has picked it up and it is now called CC Tweaked. Click the Files tab on the page and then click view all. The top file will be the latest version and I stand corrected. 1.16.4 is the latest version the mod has been updated for at the time of recording. Now let's go back to MultiMC and select 1.16.4. You will want to select whatever version is shown here under under game version. You can set the name of the instance to whatever you want. If you set it to nothing, it will name it automatically to whatever version of Minecraft you selected. I will set mine to CC Tutorials. And you can also set the name of a group to add this instance to, to make your instance list more organized. Once you're ready, click OK at the bottom. Just to be safe, before we install Computercraft, we should start up the game to see if we, we've set up everything correctly and the game runs. To do this, just double click on your instance that you created and wait for the game to load and start up. MultiMC will take a little bit of time to download the files that it needs from the Minecraft database. <laughs> now the game is starting up, and as you can see, the game started up successfully. If your game doesn't start up or it crashes while starting up, rewind the video to make sure you did everything correctly. If you think you did, go to Google and try to look up why your game is crashing. If you still find nothing, here's a pro tip. Go to your MultiMC window, right click on your Minecraft instance, and click Edit Instance. At the top of your left sidebar, you'll see Minecraft Log. If your game crashed, this most likely got opened automatically, and you should be looking at an error log. Go to MinecraftForums.net and open a new thread, give a description of the issue you're having, and copy and paste the error log inside of a spoiler. Someone may be able to help you there. Do not post the error log in the comment section of this video because it will spam the comment section and I most likely will not be able to help you because I already showed you what you need to do for this to work. Once you got your game up and running, go ahead and close the game, return to multi the MultiMC window, and right click on your Computercraft instance. Click Edit Instance. Then click Version. In order to install mods to Minecraft, we need a mod loader. One of the great things about MultiMC is that it can install the mod loader for you, saving you a great amount of headaches. For Computercraft, we want to install the Forge mod loader. On the right sidebar, click Install Forge, and select the recommended version, which is denoted by this yellow star. Then click OK. Forge should now be installed. If you want to be safe, launch the game again, make sure it starts up. From the edit instance window, you can actually click launch right there at the bottom, and it'll start up that way. If for whatever reason you get a crash log here, there is a section on the Minecraft forums for modded Minecraft. Be sure to use that section because everywhere else is for vanilla. Hmm, let me remove this thing right here, because that's actually going to get in the way. Anyway, as I was saying, once your game starts up, you will see at the bottom left you already have two mods installed. These two mods are actually just Minecraft itself and the mod loader. You can see the list of mods you have installed by clicking the Mods button at the title screen. 
Now you can go ahead and close your game again. Finally, we're on the last step and it's the easiest, installing the mod. Right click your Computercraft instance and click Edit Instance, click on Loader Mods in the left sidebar, then in the bottom of the right sidebar, click View Folder. This will open the folder where you will save all of your mods. Go back to the website where you download Computercraft and click the purple download button on the latest file. Save the file to the mods folder you just opened. Once saved, you will see it in the loader mod list here, and then you can start up your game one more time. And if you've done everything right, you'll be ready to go! Congratulations, you now have Minecraft with Computercraft, and you're ready to start learning Lua. Now, these next few steps are optional, but I recommend also installing this mod, Just Enough Items. In survival mode, it allows you to very quickly look up crafting recipes so you know how to make stuff in-game. In creative mode, or cheat mode, it allows you to quickly look up items and spawn them into your inventory, including items that don't typically show up in the vanilla creative items menu. In creative mode or cheat mode, it also lets you control time of day, weather, and various other things that you would normally only do with in-game commands. This has been released for the version of Minecraft I'm currently using, so I'm going to go ahead and download it. All mods that are using the Forge mod loader get saved to the same folder as Computercraft, and each time you download new mods, you will need to restart your game to load them into the game. If you're installing just enough items, you will need to also install FTB GUI library. This didn't used to be a thing, but I realized while creating my lesson plans that JEI now requires this library to use certain functionality. If you only care about checking recipes, you probably won't need this, but if you want to enable cheat mode or use other functionality within JEI, you will need this mod. I'll explain what a library is in terms of programming in a future lesson. Another mod I would recommend is Not Enough Items. This mod used to be what JEI is now, but this mod is just an add-on for JEI nowadays. The biggest point of this add-on is that it shows areas where it's dark enough for hostile monsters to spawn when you press F7. But I won't be installing this now because it's very... Hang on. Yeah, it's very outdated and is not made for the version of Minecraft I'm currently using, so it won't work. If you don't want to buy or you just don't want to run Minecraft for something simple, an alternative you can use is CCMUX. It's a Computercraft emulator that can run the Computercraft terminal in its own standalone environment. It runs on Java, so you will still need the JRE to use it, but as you can see, you can resize the terminal to any size you want, unlike the in-game computers. I recommend using the actual mod because I will be covering programs that interact with the world in-game, including programs that control robots. But if you just want to make programs that have nothing to do with Minecraft itself, you can use this emulator instead. It's up to you. And that's it for the first part of my Computercraft Lua tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video was informative. My goal for this series is to present all of the features available within Computercraft while teaching you how to use Lua to utilize those features. It is my hope that I can make this series accessible to both new and experienced programmers. I will be putting this series on multiple platforms including YouTube and Twitch so I can reach as wide an audience as possible. If I, if I find other places I want to upload to, I will let you know in a future video and update all of the video descriptions. I will be uploading a new lesson once per week on Saturday 3pm EST on until this chapter is over, and then once the next chapter is ready to upload, I will upload one lesson per week until that chapter is finished, and so on. If you have any questions about what I've done in this lesson, please ask away in the comments section. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you in the next lesson.